Hello and welcome to New Bedford High School, home of the Whalers, where tonight it's the last game of the regular season and your very own Brockton Boxer is coming to town with the hopes of a playoff berth in mind. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, the playoffs started last week for the Brockton Boxers. They lose one against the Big Three and they're out. And it, with the MIAA's new playoff format, they'll have four meaningless games. Yeah, you have to feel good about Brockton High's team last week. Uh, beating Durfee, it was a appreci uh, teacher's appreciation night, it was alumni night, and it was senior night. So a lot of people were there. They were looking to root on their boxes, and the boxes um, came out and had their A game on that evening. There was a lot going on. We saw a very successful air game from Jose Montero Jr., a successful run game as well. Rosen Pierre, J uh, Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. Yeah, well, two things. Montero Jr. had a successful passing game because his receivers held on to the football. Um, his line protected him, and um, the defense held its own out there as they shut out Durfee. Well, they're going to have to repeat that performance here in New Bedford tonight. What are the keys to victory for the boxers? The keys to victory, not a lot of mistakes. Receivers hold on to that football. You know their running game is going to come into form, and Mon they have to protect Montero. And long as he stays healthy out there, I don't see why Brockton can't come out of here with a victory and a big three uh, champion. Well, it's the last game of the regular season, the New Bedford Whalers and the Brockton Boxers on Brockton Community Access. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, Welcome into New Bedford High School for the last game of the regular season. It's your Barkton Boxers and the New Bedford Whalers. Miles, the first game uh, against Big Three, Brockton took it to New Bed uh, took it to Durfee, excuse me, 32 nothing. The final score in that one. They need a repeat performance from Jose Montero, Jalen Ellerby, Cundiff, and Rosen Pierre tonight. Yes, they definitely need a repeat for performance. They can't afford to come in here and uh, just play half the, the way they can play. They need to come out here and with their A game and execute on special teams, defense, as well as offense. You know the running game is there. They've had a good running game all season. Passing game, like I said earlier, it just depends on can the uh, line protect Montero, give him time, and can the receivers hold on to the football. Miles, the interesting fact of the matter is the big three is quite possibly the most interesting division in high school football. No doubt about it. It's Durfee, New Bedford, and Brockton. New Bedford and Durfee is the Thanksgiving rivalry game, which comes after the MIAA South Sectional playoffs. So Brockton needs to defeat both of these teams to get into the playoffs, and should they lose, then the team with the best record gets in. Brockton... Seems like ages ago, but we lost uh, three straight games to the Catholic Conference. We come into this game at two and three. Brockton needs two straight wins going into the, the, uh, the South section. Yeah, and, and one good thing about coming into this game is they're on a high, slight high. They've got some momentum behind them because they won last week. So they're feeling good. I'm sure they want to come out here and play some football. I'm sure the coaches 
Coach Colombo and his crew prepared them properly the full week and let them know they got to come out here and play some football. New Bedford's just not going to um, bend over and uh, let Brockton take it to them. Brockton's going to have to earn this win this evening. Brockton winning the toss, electing to defer to the second half. So Max Tobo to kick off. His little squib kick bouncing all the way, picked up at the 20 yard line. A natural grass surface here at New Bedford. And a good return and going all the way. Is anyone going to catch him? Is the Whalers return man. He's going up the sideline. He could. And he goes all the way for a Whalers touchdown on the opening kickoff. Wow. Well, there you have it right there. The special teams didn't do their job, didn't cover their lanes. And um, the New Bedford returner put on the speed and scored. Phew, looked like at least an 80-yard touchdown return. The ball picked up at around the 20-yard line. And so not the way Brockton wanted to start this game. Yeah, and that, that was Jefferson. Lead number seven. And uh, he's only a sophomore. Extra point good. Seven to nothing Whalers. 13 seconds into the game. Yeah, I'm sure that's a wake up call for the boxes. Offense got to get on the field and um, move that football a little bit. Well, it seems like the Brockton will have the uh, the opening kickoff of the game. We're only 13 seconds in. Brockton needs to forget the first 13 seconds of this game happened. And one of the more interesting, interesting. things we've seen at New Bedford High is the whale of mascot. There's, there's a whale roaming around the stands. Well, that's what New Bedford is known for, their whaling and fishing industry in their heyday and that's their nicknames the New Bedford Whalers of course the great seven time award winning director and producer Nubi Ratto was once calling a Brockton New Bedford hockey game and in the second period this one's picked up it's not Cundiff. Dropped at the 44-yard line. The, the second period trivia fact was, why are the New Bedford Whalers called? Well, the New Bedford Whalers. Answer coming in the third period. It's about a minute left in the game. And the cameraman for that particular game, and this one, Mike the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton, reminded Newby that he still had yet to give the answer. Why are the New Bedford Whalers called the Whalers. And the answer was one of the all-time lines <laughs> out of Newby. And around give to it's Isaiah Laguerre and he's dropped at the 50 so a gain of about four and a half. The answer was this. Honestly, I don't know. I think they used to fish whales or something. Yeah, it would, like I said, back in the, in the heyday in the early 20th century, New Bedford was known for their whaling. Big whaling town down here in Massachusetts. Big whaling town, and they also big fishing town. But you don't fish whales. No, they you, fish fish. You whales, yeah. you whale whales. They did both down here. You had the whalers, and then you had the fishermen. Four receivers set. Darty Glenn on the far side. Montero Jr. on the quarterback keeper. Now he pitches out to Rosen Pierre, and Pierre's got the first down. Yeah, I think they might call it face mask or something. Looks like the defender grabbed up near his helmet. Now, New Bedford has a very nice um, museum, whaling museum. The whaling museum, very nice. Very Big nice. Auditorium there. Yes. Newby had, Newby Reto had one of his, uh, what would you call it? Documentary screening. Yes, yes. And that museum was awesome. Gave you all the history of uh, whaling industry, fishing industry. And that was a nice run there. 
So Rosenpierre picking up the first down, a face mask tacking on an additional 15 yards. Again, four receiver set tri trips to the far side. Pierre, the lone man, flanking Montero. Montero, quarterback keeper, fakes the pitch out, and he's going to be wrapped up. Might have fallen forward for a gain of about three. You know, I, I would have liked if maybe he would have pitched that out to uh, Pierre. There was only one man over there. And, you know, Pierre, you, it takes a couple of guys to tackle him, unless you get lucky. Like Brockman's got their offense spread out. Three receiver set, two backs. It's Celebrity Cundiff and Pierre. Or Dexter Cumberlander, rather, getting the call, and he has a gain of about six. It'll be third and about one. Yeah, Dexter, he's a senior on this team, and um, recently he's got a lot of playing time. Obviously, showing his senior leadership. When he's out there, he makes the best of it when he gets out there. The receiver set, Cumberlander and Pierre, the two backs. They give to Pierre and chugging ahead as a first down at the 18 yard line. Yeah, Pierre did a nice job following his blockers to get that first down. He was very patient as he ran with the football. First and 10 for the boxers from the 18 yard line. Montero Jr. with the shotgun. Back to pass. And he's going to underthrow his man on the far side. Intended for Jalen Ellerby Cundiff. Yeah, he underthrew him and he threw behind him. If he could have made that pass right to him, because he, he had to defend him on him, but he was shielding the football from the defendant and he would have caught that football. Or at least he would have had a chance to catch it. Second and 10 for the boxers. Three receivers set. Cumberlander and Pierre in the backfield. Along with Montero Jr. who's in the gun. No, they, they're gonna call movement. It's gonna be a false start against Brockton, so it'll be second and 15. That flag came over from the New Bedford side. He saw something there, either someone moving well, obviously someone moving. Four receivers this time, Paul Mitchell. He's split out to the near side. Montero Jr. on the keeper and evades one tackle before he's run out of bounds and sliding onto the track. So we've seen that injury once this fall season, it was New Bedford's soccer goaltender who attempted to stop a ball from going over the end line, resulting in a boxer corner kick. And he slid at Marciano Stadium on the turf. Rainy night, maybe about five, 10 yards into the track, hurt his knee, couldn't put any weight on it. Almost a similar situation here with Jose Montero Jr. Montero Jr. has been injury prone in his career. He's missed the last two seasons with uh, ACL injuries. No ill effects of that this year. Yep, so far. We always seem to hold our breath a little bit when a uh, hard hit or awkward fall or whatever. When um, Brockton's quarterback goes down. Like you said, Mad Dog, uh, been hampered with injuries most of his um, career here at Brockton. It was Thomas O'Brien Jr. getting some time last week against Severian in relief of Montero Jr. This is Laguerre getting back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be a third and about 10. 
with flags down. The quarterback position at Brockton has been really injury prone the last couple of years. Of course, Jose Montero Jr. missing the last two. Matthew Caruso in relief of the injured Montero Jr. last season, breaking his collarbone in the playoff game against Newton North. Yeah, Brockton's had a tough, some tough luck the last three or four years with their quarterback, trying to stay healthy. Montero Jr. to pass, and off the hands of Ellerby Cundiff. A little high, but it looks like he should have had it. And, and that's the key with the passing game for Montero is can his receivers hold on to the football? That would have been a great catch. Big catch. Would have been first down, most likely to, first down and goal. Well, instead, we're looking at a turnover on downs. First and 10 for the Whalers with 7.22 left in the first quarter. I did like, even though they didn't come out with any points, it was it was a good uh, series of downs and drives for Brockton going down the uh, football field. They just couldn't quite finish it. But uh, it, that was a good first series for the uh, offense. And it's, I think, Jefferson again, and he's got a hole. He's to the 40. To the 30, he's got two men to beat, and he's run out of bounds all the way down at the 15-yard line, number 23, Nigel Palmer. Wow. Little guy, 5'7", 176 pounds, another sophomore. And, um, gee, they, they've got some scat backs on this team that can put the speed on. And so it's the Whalers threatening again, first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Nigel Palmer with. I, I tell you what, what made that play. There was a great block out there on the cornerback, upended him, and that just opened the lane for him to go down the field. Give to Palmer again up the gut. He's going to gain maybe about three yards. Officially four, so second and six for New Bedford. Big text, big uh, test for the boxes. New Bedford's in the red zone. First test for the boxes because their first score was on a uh, kickoff return. Two receivers, one split out to each side. It's Palmer and Jefferson in the backfield. Pitch out to Palmer, trying to get to the corner on the far side. And he has a gain of about three. It'll be a third, and we'll call it two. Yeah, nice job by the boxers defense there on the left-hand side. They was ready for that sweep, and uh, they covered that very well. Quarterback True Williams, the junior, 6'3", 207, has not yet aired the ball out. Looks like he might here in the gun with three receivers. Williams back to pass, he's hit and sacked back at the 19 yard line. Yeah, that was uh, number nine, number 95 for the boxes. Nice job with the pressure. He just blew right through his uh, blocker. He was determined to get the quarterback. Sonny Okanlola, junior 6'4 and 260. He's a big boy. 260, 6'4. Tough to stop him. Timeout, Willis. New Bedford using one of their timeouts. So Sonny Okanlola. Of course, one of the starters on the Brockton Boxers men's basketball team. 
Originally got his start here on the football field. Transforming into one of the many two sport athletes or multiple sport athletes at Brockton High. We seem to talk about him every single year. Yeah, good solid uh, student and, and player. Basketball and football, he's a good student. Does a nice job on the basketball court as well as out on the gridiron. Just under five minutes to go, seven nothing Whalers threatening again. But it's Brockton's defense that has to come up big here on fourth down. We have fourth and about 11. Yeah, four big, receiver set. Big fourth down for the uh, boxer defense. True Williams in the gun. Back to pass, he's gonna look out and he's gonna get absolutely clobbered by three boxers. Paul Mitchell in on the tackle along with number seven, Nathan Deroulis. Yeah, that was your classic blitz. They sent everybody and uh, that was a nice job of them going right in there and getting the quarterback, he didn't have a chance. Dimitri Doranville in on the tackle as well. So it's a turnover on downs. Brockton with first and 10 at the 25 yard line. It's been an interesting first quarter since the uh, opening kickoff return for a touchdown. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, right now the special teams have played big in this game. Brockton's offense out there for the second time in this game early on. Give to Pierre, and he's brought down at the line of scrimmage. Looks like they're gonna spot him a gain of about one. Yeah, right now, early in this game, the Whalers defense is doing a pretty good job clogging up those holes for the most part, but we're still early in the ball game. How much stamina does this uh, New Bedford Whalers defense has? with the consistent pounding of this uh, Brockton running attack. Trips to the far side, Montero in the gun flanked by Pierre. They give to Pierre, trying to get to the near side and he's dropped at the 32. We'll bring up about a third and above five. Yeah, so far the, uh, New Beth is doing some good tackling out there with uh, our running backs. Defense is not afraid to go mix it up. A little bit of a slow start here for Brockton. Of course, at least in the last five years, we haven't seen a game as big as this in the big three division. For all the marbles Brockton loses, they don't make the playoffs, they win, and they're in. Montero Jr. on the keeper. He spins off a hit and gets to the 38. And he'll have a boxer first down. Well, I tell you, because of that, clever spin move he did right there. He was he was able to get that first down for the boxes and continue this drive. Well, I can remember 15, 16 years ago, we come down here and New Bedford, that's when New Bedford had some really good teams and it was electric down here, Mad Dog. It was electric. Place was packed with boxer fans as well as Whaler fans. Big rivalry, as you say. Trips to the far side again, Montero in the gun, receiving the snap, looking to pass. He's gonna keep it himself, and he's going to throw it away into the boxer sideline. Yeah. Late flag thrown in. Yeah, that was a smart play by Montero to realize, uh, let me get rid of this football. And this flag was thrown in after the play had ended, well after the play had ended. We wait the call. Oh, they're gonna call intentional, um, intentional grounding? grounding? He was almost to the sideline. He was well out of the pocket. Yes. Wow. That's the first thing I thought. So, well, he's out of that uh, hash mark area. Well out of it. So intentional grounding against the boxers and what perhaps is the worst call we've seen of the year. Wow. I mean, when he threw that ball, he was almost out of bounds on the boxer sideline. 
Now it's a second and about 20 for Brockton. And overthrowing Miller Recundiff. Rosen Pierre, rather, the intended receiver. Third and 20 for the Boxers. Yeah, that ball was thrown a little bit too far in front of him and a lot of mustard on it. Montero right now, he doesn't look too crisp in the passing, his passing game right now. But we got a long way to go. Hopefully he'll warm up and get in the rhythm. He did make that nice pass over to Jay Cuntliff at the other end, but uh, Jay couldn't ha hold on to it. Montero Jr. splitting out, looking to pass, and Ooh. almost with an Odell Beckham Jr.-like catch was LRB Cundiff. Cundiff almost made a great play, a great catch. Just a little bit too far out in front of him, but he got a hand on it, just couldn't pull it in. Another south sectional action. A heavyweight bout. Old school 15 rounds. BC High and Severian going at it this week. Where at? At BC High. Scoreless at the end of one. Two teams known for their offensive prowess as Tobo with a low kick bouncing at the 46 all the way down and out at the 38, and that's where we'll see the second look of the night at the Whalers offense led by True Williams. Well, I tell you, Matt, I'm so far pretty impressed with New Bedford's defense. Hasn't given up any points yet. We're still in the first quarter, 238 on the clock, but they've done a pretty good job keeping in containment this Brockton offense. First and 10 for the Whalers from the 38. Williams handing off to Nigel Palmer, who's bottled up, loss of about a yard. Yeah, right in there in the mix. Number 58 for the boxes. A.J. Walker. A junior for the boxes. Boxes need to hold the uh, Whalers on this offensive series and get that football back. This one, a little bit of a crazy start. Opening kickoff return for a touchdown, 81 yards. And then two consecutive turnovers on downs for one each for the Whalers and Boxers. And then a punt. And now New Bedford with a third and about 14. Williams, Williams took it himself and was knocked out of play. That was a great job by the Boxers' uh, defensive backfield. They covered all the receivers. Quarterback had time, just couldn't find anybody. And then he had to roll out. True Williams rolled out to his right, still couldn't find nobody. A lot of pressure on him. A good job overall by the defense there. Forcing a third and long. Two receivers, one split to each side for the New Bedford Whalers. Williams under center. It's Palmer and Jefferson behind him. Back to pass and in trouble again and almost picked off. There are two boxers in the area. Yeah, that was supposed to be a screen pass, but because of the pressure that the boxers put on the quarterback, the play couldn't develop properly, and fortunately, Brockton will get the football back. It was Paul Mitchell in the area of the falling ball. And so back to punt are the Whalers, LRB Cundiff, the lone boxer back. Low snap, and a high end over end kick, bouncing at the 38, and it's gonna be touched down at the 32. 
decent starting field position as both of these teams trying to settle in. Yeah, Brockton's defense has done a good job so far on this uh, New Bedford offense. But the score indicates New Bedford's up by seven points because of their special teams right off the bat, Matt, like you said, 13 seconds into the football game. Brockton's special teams has been really good this year. Yeah, they have. Minus the first 13 seconds of this game. Give to Pierre. He's brought down at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Oh. I'm sure the coaches for Brockton held their breath a little bit. On the handoff, Pierre kind of bobbled it, but he was able to gain control before a New Bedford player would hit him. And uh, like you said, no gain on the play. Second and 10. We've only got 25 seconds and counting left in this first quarter. Let's give two Pierre balls out. And he's gonna be ruled down by contact. There was a time, Matt, way before your time, but back in the se early 70s and back, that was a fumble once the your body hits the ground. And if that ball comes loose, it was a fumble. That's, what, that's a modern day uh, call as far as um, the ground will cause it. I'm not sure what time period, but I know in the early 70s, that was a fumble. But somewhere down the line, 70s, 80s, late 70s, 80s, the NFL decided to call, um, along with the NFL did it and everybody else followed, college and high school as well. The ground cannot cause a fumble. Of course, the, the new rule in invoking the ground is the ground cannot be used to help secure a catch. Right. The ball cannot touch the ground, cannot be loose while your hand is on the ground, right. or it's an incomplete pass. Exactly. So we're at the end of the first quarter, 7-0 New Bedford over the Brockton Boxers. The 81-yard opening kickoff return for Shomari Jefferson is the lone marker of the game. We've seen two turnovers on downs and two punts. The Brockton boxers with a third, and we'll call it four. Two receivers, quarterback keeper, and close to the first down marker, depends on the spot. Well, if they spot it with the uh, Referees, they're going to give him a first down. He didn't even look at the chains. So pretty definitive spot there for yeah. the officials. First and 10 for Brockton. Yeah, very generous spot. Not saying he didn't make it, but uh, referees called the first down very quickly. No uh, complaints from uh, the Whalers coaching staff. Two receivers, it's Ellerby Cundiff and Paul Mitchell. Let's give to Rosen Pierre. Pierre makes a nice cut and trying to turn the corner on the near side. He's brought down at the 44. And we see that sneaky speed of Rosen Pierre again. A little bit slow start and then just absolutely turning on the afterburners. Yeah, that was a touchdown saving tackle by number five, Baron Hilton. Made a nice job of solo tackle to uh, save the touchdown because he was, he was clear sailing if he could have got by that tackle right there. Now we're going to have a measurement, and I don't know about this spot. It's going to be a second in inches. Down. 
second and inches. One would imagine a quarterback keeper for Jose Montero Jr. is coming up. We're going to have another, another measurement just to check on the hash marks. And it will be a second and about a foot. Yeah, uh, Jose Montero Jr., very crafty quarterback uh, when, he, when he has to get the one or two yards for the first down. He knows uh, who to follow, where to cut. Give to the fullback, number 44, who fell forward. And that is... I believe gonna be marked for a loss. Yeah, that was a nice tackle by uh, Mark Hawkins. Junior. Nathan Farias on the carry for Brockton. He's in the backfield again. Third and two. This time quarterback keeper for Montero Jr. falling forward. And I think he's got it. Montero on the carry. Tackle by Sores. First down, Brockton. And it's going to be a first down for the boxers. Nice crafty job by uh, Montero again. He knows how to get that, get that one or two yards that is necessary to get a first down. First and 10 for Brockton, Montero Jr. under center, back to pass, looking long, looking deep, he's got a man and it's caught! I think that's Ellerby Cundiff for the boxer touchdown. Well, there you go. Quarterback had time, threw a nice pass, and the, and the receiver held on to it, equals six points. Nice job by the boxer's offense. No flags on the play, good job. 37 yard. Pass for the boxers. Now it's Tobo to att attempt the extra point. Wow, nice job by Tobo. Really nice job by the holder because it seems like Tobo was in there a split second, a little bit too early, but somehow he got it up there. The uh, holder got it down for Tobo. And we're all knotted up at seven apiece. With eight and a half to go in the first half. And, and that's, that's a really big touchdown right there because it uplifts the boxers. Now they're tied, it's a new ball game. Let's get out here and uh, kick some butt. Palmer and Jefferson set up deep to the relic. It's Nigel Palmer and Shamari Jefferson back deep. The squibber is going to be picked up. I think that's Jefferson. And he's brought down at the 30 yard line. And number 27 on the return, Jadrian Carrion. Another sophomore. This New Bedford team might be scary in a few years. Yeah, they, they, they look like a kind of a young team. And you're exactly right. They could, uh, they could blossom into a, a serious uh, contender for that Big Three championship. Three receivers set for the Whalers. True Williams, quarterback keeper, he's got a gain of about five. Lowers the shoulder and chugs ahead. They'll give him six. Williams on the carry, tackled by Deleuze. Gain seven, 
Nice job by number 22, David Belsies. Mad Dog? Belsius. Belsius. Junior. Looks like Brockton wants a timeout. 8-17 in the second quarter. Time out for the boxers. Just some personnel changes, it looks like. So it's a second and about three for the Whalers. Junior quarterback, True Williams. Gain of about seven on the last run. Three receivers set, Williams in the shotgun, flanked by Palmer and Jefferson. Back to pass is True Williams. A long flick pass, and he's got his man number five to the 10, the five, in the end zone. Touchdown, Whalers. That is Baron Hilton on the touchdown reception. Well, the Whalers said, touche. If you can throw the bomb, we can throw the bomb also. Great pass, receiver got under it, outran his uh, defender and um, scored six points. And New Bedford is back on top. I think it was a breakdown in coverage. I think uh, defensive back there, we were just talking about him, number 22. Just didn't stay with the receiver the whole time. Extra point is up and good. It's 14-7 New Bedford. I believe that was a play action play and it froze the defensive back just enough to give the receiver a uh, one or two step advantage on the fly play. He just went straight down the field and the ball came right down in the bread basket. This New Bedford team is challenging this boxer team right now. 8.08 on the clock here in the second quarter. So the interesting night here continues. Another high school action. Or fun fact, rather. We'll go with the fun fact before we grab the local scores. Brockton, as a football program, after beating Durfee next week, has 799 wins in school history. Should the Boxers beat New Bedford here, it'll be win number 800 for the Boxers. And, and that's, uh, that's remarkable. High school team, 800 wins. Most in the state. Number two is Everett. No surprise there. No. Nope. They're currently beating Malden 29-0 early in the second quarter. The last Super Bowl Brockton victory was against Everett years ago. There were some ago. classics back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Of course, lately it's been Brockton against the Catholic Conference. I think the last one was back in 2010, where we lost to BC High in the waning minutes. Last Brockton Super Bowl victory, of course, 2005. And the great thing about that victory was New Bedford came into that Super Bowl undefeated. I believe Brockton had one loss, but New Bedford was undefeated, very cocky. The crowd was cocky. I remember calling that game, and we was outside, and, and they didn't have enough room in the um, press box. So we did the game outside, and uh, let me tell you, that was some exciting football because Brockton didn't take the lead until late in the fourth quarter. And they had to go for a two-point conversion to, to take the lead. 
Trips to the far side, low snap handled cleanly by Montero. His pass for Paul Mitchell falls incomplete. I'm one of some, one of the, the Bedford players got a hand on it because all of a sudden it it just fell dead. I believe one of the linemen or linebackers got a piece of their hand on that football. Second and a long six, we'll call it seven for Brockton. Four receivers set. Rosen Pierre, the lone man flanking Montero in the gun. Brockton, Brockton calls another timeout. And the play clock was winding, winding down. down. They might have called that for fear of a delay of game. Well, this is a big, obviously this is a big third down for the boxers. They would love to continue on down the field, which they really need to. They don't need to give uh, New Bedford back the football. Montero Jr. throwing across his body, and Ellerby Cundiff didn't put his hands up to try to catch that one. Yeah, that you might know. have been a little bit uh, ahead of him. Ball had a little mustard on it. So unfortunately for the boxers, they're gonna have to punt the football. Still a lot of time left in this second quarter. Martin will receive the opening kickoff to the second half. Interesting one here, Bridgewater Raynham beating St. John's Prep 12-0. Wow. Botch snap and taken down, ball's out. And it's gonna be another turnover on downs for the Boxers and a first down at the 11 yard line for New Bedford. Yeah, that was a heads up play by Caleb Jarden, a linebacker, he went in there and Saw the um, the punter fumble the football and rushed in there to uh, tackle him. And uh, New Bedford's in a great position to get six more points on the board. Brockton calls a timeout. The defensive coach for Brockton calls his team over. This is a very important um, stand right here for the boxers. They really need to hold hold their ground. Don't let the um, Whalers into the end zone make them uh, try a field goal attempt. But I know they don't want to go down. Right now they're down by seven points, 14-7. They do not want to go down 20, 21 7 in this football game. That would just give New Bedford extra, extra momentum and energy to these uh, players. 7 07 to go. First and 10 for the Whalers on the boxer 11 yard line. Two receivers set. Williams under center with Nigel Palmer, the only back. Give to Palmer, cutting out to the far side. He's gonna be wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Might even be a loss of one. Yeah, Brockton's not, wasn't having any of that. They were right on it. Dexter Cumberlander on the big stop for the boxers. Second and 10 now for New Bedford. 
changing it up. It's Williams in the gun with four receivers. Trips to the near side. Palmer flanking Williams to his right. Williams receiving the snap back to pass. And it's going to fall incomplete off of the hands of DeCruz. Yeah, that was fortunate for the boxes because Cruz should have caught the football. The um, Whalers flooded that right side of their offense with three receivers. And um, luckily for the boxes, the receiver dropped the football. Third and 10 now for New Bedford, and the Whalers going to burn a timeout. And this is a good good timeout for the uh, New Bedford Whalers because they really want to take advantage of this turnover that Brockton gave them. And they really want to take advantage and uh, hopefully come out. They want to come out of here with six points, but hopefully the boxes can um, stay strong on this third down. This is a big third down. Good thing third and long, Mad Dog. It'll be third and 10 from the 11. That was a little bit of a different playing surface here. Natural grass field. Of course, different from what we see at Marciano Stadium. Not only that, this field not NFL regulation. The goal posts for a field goal are wider and shorter. Marciano's narrower and longer. Interesting caveat, there's a lot more space to knock it through should the boxers attempt a field goal. I mean the Whalers. Williams quarterback keeper up the middle. He's got his jersey grabbed on and he's gonna be dropped for a loss of one. And that'll bring up fourth and 11 for New Bedford. Yeah, nice pursuit by the defense right there. You saw who came off the pile there, number 95 for the boxes, Ukandola. He's always around the football. So there's gonna be a field goal attempt. It'll be a 29 yarder. New Bedford calling another timeout. I think they called the timeout. They wanted to see Brockton's defensive setup. And uh, number six. Now New Bedford's gonna send the offense back out. Interesting. New Bedford's kicker, number 73, Victor Lopes, not listed as a kicker. He's an offensive and defensive lineman, six foot, 285 pounds. So it's a fourth and 10 for the Whalers from the 11 yard line. Trips to the near side. Williams in the gun flanked by Nigel Palmer. Spread defense for the boxers. High snap and it's out, the ball's out. Still on, Brockton's got it. Brockton recovering the fumble and they'll have it about 20 yards north of where they would have got it should New Bedford have committed a turnover on downs. Exactly, Mad Dog. They got a big break there where the quarterback fumbled the football, gave Brockton more real estate to work with as the offense comes back on the football field. That, that's a coach's nightmare right there. Um, head coach Mark DeBrito, DeBrito decides to, instead of trying to field goal, to go for the first down, and it just totally backfired on him. That's Montero Jr. getting dropped back at the 23-yard line. Wow, it looks like Montero was surprised that the football came to him so quickly. Could have been miscommunication between the quarterback and the center because he was looking one way, all of a sudden, luckily the center snapped it perfectly right into the numbers of uh, Montero. You can see him explaining over there to Coach Colombo.
4.51 left in this second quarter. Second and 15 for the boxers. Give to Pierre and he's swallowed up in the backfield. Yeah, the Whalers were ready for that one. A loss of two and that'll bring up a third and about 16 now for Brockton. Brockton's offense is in a funk lately. And they're actually going backwards. New Bedford's uh, defense has risen to the occasion. New Bedford was only had 10 players out there. Number 23 finally gets out there just as the boxers were lining up. Only two men on the line of scrimmage. Montero Jr. back to pass, looking oh, that's over a, the middle, where's, and Paul where's the, Mitchell, where's and the flag? here's a flag coming where, in. Yes, that was pass interference. It's pass interference on the New Bedford Whalers. Big break for the boxers right there. Ref got some good wind under that flag. You know, I, at first I didn't see it, and that's why I said, where's the flag? Because I saw the, the, the um, interference right away. What? What? Oh, horrible non-call right there, folks. And so it's not pass interference, and it's going to be fourth and about 17. Wow. That's, uh, that's a tough break for the boxes right there. It was definitely pass interference. As uh, Paul Mitchell ready to catch the football, and he was hit from the back by his uh, defender, and no call. There was a call, but they decided to pick up the flag and put it back in their pocket. Tobo's kick, taken by Palmer. Palmer to the 45, the 50 to the 45 of Brockton, and brought down at the 44. Well, New Bedford has good field position. They're in boxer territory. Exchange of words down there after the tackle. I'm sure the box is a little frustrated. I would be too. But the boxes have to keep their cool. Still a lot of football to go. They're only down by seven points with 335 left in this second half. Excuse me, first half. It's been what can only be described as sloppy. True Williams giving off to Palmer, chugging ahead, brought down at the 40 yard line. It'll be a second and about six. Yep. Palmer's being pushed back to the huddle. He didn't like something, maybe the way he was tackled. You know, you gotta watch out for these little running backs because sometimes they're hard to see with the lineman in front of you, and sometimes it's really tough for the defense to pick them up, and they're gonna call a personal foul. I think I saw a chop block call against the boxers. 15 that's, yards up north, free first down. That's a big one, because uh, New Bedford's already in boxer territory. That brings the ball down to the 25 yard line of Brockton. So New Bedford couldn't ask for better starting position than they had on their last drive. First down at the 11 yard line. And they couldn't convert. Now it's a first and 10 at the 25. Trips to the far side, True Williams in the gun. Palmer to his left. Williams low snap, giving off to Palmer who's bottled up. Now jumps to the outside and has a gain of about four. Wow. Even though he gained four yards, that was quite a run. By the running back, Palmer. He was uh, breaking tackles. Seemed like the boxers were just sliding off of him. He's a slashing type runner. Trips to the near side, Williams in the shotgun, Palmer to his right. 
Brockton showing blitz, and now they come in Oak and Lola. Ooh, another drop ball. Should have had it. Ball was right there in his hands. Just couldn't hold on to it. Nice job by the quarterback to get rid of the football with pressure on him. Oak and Lola was a freight train coming yeah, in. That's a good description. That would scare anybody. If you're the quarterback and you're trying to find a receiver and you see this big guy coming at you. Second and six. Trips to the near side. Williams back to pass and he throws across his body. He's got Hilton and it's broken up incomplete as the boxers were about to clock Williams again. Yeah, nice play by number 22 for the boxers there. David Belkis. Big fourth down here for the uh, boxers. More of a big fourth down for the boxers defense than it is for the uh, New Bedford offense. Sure, they'd like to continue on, but boxers cannot ill afford to uh, fall behind anymore late in the second quarter. They, they want to go into the uh, locker room um, with a little bit more mo momentum. And that would give them some momentum. They can hold this. Uh, Flags down, and we're going to have a false start against New Bedford. Yeah. So it'll be fourth and 12. Yeah. yeah, this will definitely lift up Brockton's defense. If they can uh, hold on and get, get the ball back to their offense late in this second quarter. Plenty of time left for the boxers to get out there and do something with the football. Fourth and 12, Williams in the shotgun. And he's just going to now where's the, where's the grounding? Coach Colombo's looking for a grounding call. The refs are gonna have a discussion. Yeah, because he was still inside the uh, hash marks and there was nobody out there. Uh, it's gonna be a Brockton ball. The, the question would be, for me anyway, if they were to call grounding, normally that results in a loss of a down in, in a 10 yard penalty. On fourth down, you can't have a loss of a down. You give the boxers 10 free yards? It's a good question. Well, fortunately, the boxers offense is back on the football field with 217 left in this second quarter. First and 10 boxers from their own 27. Pitch out to Pierre, he makes a cut, still on his feet, and finding a hole all the way up to the 40, still on his feet to the 45, all the way to the 46 yard line, Rosen Pierre. Wow, that was a pretty bruising run right there. Nice job by uh, Pierre. The senior. And that's just what the boxers need. Some excitement from this offense. Now the pitch out to Pierre again. He's across the line of scrimmage, finding a hole, turning the corner. He's got another first down, all the way to the 40 yard line, none brought down at the 36 of New Bedford. Wow, that was just great running, Mad Dog, right there by Pierre. They decided to give it to him again. Smart play call right there. Keep feeding him the rock, he's had success on this drive. Boxers want to get up to the line quickly as they have New Bedford on the ropes a little bit. Time out call by New Bedford now with 148 to go. Yeah, that was a smart call. Smart timeout by New Bedford. They need to regroup right now. Gather their thoughts on how to control this running game. Two, two big running plays 
taking some big chunks off this football field. They're in Whaler territory, as you said, Mad Dog. They're at about the 35-yard line of uh, New Bedford. With well, BR is still beating St. John's Prep 12-0. Severian is taking a 3-0 lead against BC High. Wow, that's a good game there. And that's at BC. At BC, right? I don't envy the people on Morrissey Boulevard. It's a little bit warmer of a day, but with that sea breeze, you never know. Well, that's why Mike the Postman is um, wrapped up good. He's He's been through some pretty harsh weather out there taping these um, football games. I think that one was probably the worst. On Worcester Boulevard, BC. raining, yes. windy, <laughs> nasty, as Rosen Pierre gets the call again, and this time he's brought down at the 36. Yeah, that was a nice tackle by Hilton. The uh, junior made a nice solo tackle. Clock running with about 125 on the uh, scoreboard. Montero Jr. jumping oh! in his pick goal. Montero oh! Jr. throwing an interception and brought down at the 30 yard line is the New Bedford return man. He and didn't see him, was... Matt. He didn't see him. Costly mistake by Montero. He did not see number nine. That's Isaiah Gomes, the junior defensive back on the interception for the Whalers. I mean, Gomes had no, no choice but to hold on to the football. It was thrown right at the numbers. And he took off. Thank, luckily, Fox is Rosen to, Pierre with the tackle. Yeah. Oh, defense had been, been tested before. Now they're being tested again with 113 left in this second quarter. New Bedford's last two drives resulting in turnovers. True Williams back to pass and he's gonna get wow. swallowed up. Yes. And trucked way back at the 47 yard line. Oak and Lola and number 93, Dimitri Dornville. What a great defensive play there. That'll bring up a second, and let's do some math here. Carry the one. Uh, second and 25 to go. And that was just both defensive ends. The um, bookends coming in full speed, knocking over the blocker, and just manhandling the quarterback. You know, this is not going to get any easier, Mad Dog, for that. New Bedford offensive line to keep these guys under control. I think if you're New Bedford here, you just take some shots to the end zone. You got 35 seconds, nothing to lose. I don't think you're gonna make it there on the ground, although Palmer has been effective against the boxers tonight. Correct me if I'm wrong, but both New Bedford touchdowns have been pass plays. I know the first one has. Well, the first one was the, uh, the return Oh, opening that's right. kickoff, yes. and the second one was, was a 45 yard bomb yeah. to Baron Hilton. It looks like they're going to do just that. Three receivers to the near side, and Williams is going to throw an incomplete pass intended for number eight, Jeremy DeCruz. Yep, Jeremy should have had that football. New Bedford's receivers having trouble holding on to the football. Now it's a third and 25 for New Bedford. Three receivers, two to the near side. 
Palmer and Jefferson, the two backs. Williams back to pass. Looking long to the far sideline, it's going to fall incomplete. And that'll bring up a fourth and 25 with 23 seconds left. Yeah, that was good coverage by Paul Mitchell out there. He blanketed his receiver. Receiver had no chance of getting to that football. As Paul Mitchell did a nice job out there in a very clutch situation. It was third down. Boxes hold their ground again. And Bedford's gonna pump this one away. Offsides is gonna be called against the boxers here. Free play. And the punt is going to be touched down at the 10. Now, if I was New Bedford, I'd just um, wave off the penalty, put the boxes deep in their own territory. You don't want to give the uh, boxes another chance at the uh, punt return. And the offsides is declined by New Bedford, yeah. so just trying to end what has been a very long first half. It has. I'm Brockton, I'm just taking a knee here with 14 seconds left. And it looks like they will do just that. Montero Jr. takes a knee. Clock winds down to zero, the first half has come to an end. 14-7, New Bedford on top. Miles, it's been a crazy one. Opening kickoff, return 81 yards for a touchdown. Since then, we saw two turnovers on downs, two punts, and the Broxers finally responded with a 45-yard bomb. It's been a wild one. Yes, it has. I'm just, nice job by the coaching staff of Brockton to keep the uh, kids' heads in the game after that electrifying kickoff return for a TD for New Bedford starting off this football game. Brockton has settled down, they've been focused. Uh, a couple of bad breaks for the boxes, but they're still in this football game. They're only down by seven points, Mad Dog. 14-7, the Whalers leading the boxers at halftime. We're gonna step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Green hat, <laughs> red hat, oops. <laughs> Red shirt, blue shirt, <laughs> yellow shirt, oops. <laughs> yellow pants, red pants, green pants, oops. <laughs> morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Here's your check. Oh, 
You, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around ten thousand dollars in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom. That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back into New Bedford High School for. Tonight's action, the final regular season game for these two teams. It's the Brockton Boxers and the New Bedford Whalers going at it. For all the marbles, Brockton wins. They wrap up the division there in the playoffs. They lose, well, then it gets more complicated. Yes, it does, and um, Brockton's going to really be tested in this second half to see if they can overcome a deficit of seven points. Rosen Pierre falling on the ball. You cannot get up and continue the path, so... Rockton with a little bit of a missed opportunity there. Last week against Durfee, a 33 to nothing victory. 14 passes attempted for Jose Montero Jr. Nine of them complete, good for 108 yards. Two interceptions last week and we've seen one already tonight. New Bedford unable to capitalize on it. Ooh, Pierre almost broke. He broke a few tackles. Broke. If he would have broke one more, he would have went for about at least another 15 yards. <coughs> Boxers come right out and pound it. Up the middle. Try to soften up this defensive line here in the second half. Score coming into this second half. 14-7, New Bedford on top. Gee, that was a great fake. Fortunately for New Bedford, number 56, Carlos Alves made the shoestring tackle on Montero Jr. Otherwise, he was going to make some big yardage on that particular play. Some injury news. Number 27, Jadrian Carrion of the New Bedford Whalers on the sideline. He came out on a cart to start this second half, is currently stretching out. As Rosen Pierre is brought down in the backfield, it'll be a loss of about five. Gee, that was, that was a tough play right there on third down. Did not fool the New Bedford defense at all. They were ready for that play going to the right. And that left side of that uh, Whaler defense was ready for the boxes. Now they're gonna have to punt the football. Good punt box by number seven. And he's brought down immediately, no return for Shomari Jefferson, who returned the opening kick of this game. 81 yards to the house. Yeah, no fear with Jefferson. He tried to pick that football up. He did pick it up with um, boxes right on him. So now we'll get to see what New Bedford's offense does here in the second half on their first possession. True Williams says flags are thrown. Yeah, I think they're gonna call uh, movement on the offense. I think the slot back was moving a little bit. I don't think he knew exactly what to do. And there's your legal procedure called. I believe that's a five yard penalty. The first and 15 now for the Whalers.
three receiver set. Williams flanked by Jefferson and Nigel Palmer. The give to Palmer, who's going east and west, and he is clobbered out of bounds by Paul Mitchell. Yeah, that was nice pursuit by Mitchell. Whalers tried to fool the Brockton defense, but the defense wasn't going for the fake. Defense would like to step up here and uh, have the Whalers go four and out, get that ball back into um, Montero Jr. in the offensive uh, team's hand. Now second and 16. Williams looking long, he's got Hilton. And the pass falls incomplete. Yeah, that, that pass was on the left-hand side of Hilton's shoulder, and he was running to the center of the field. So he had to turn around and try to make a play, but it wasn't happening. Brings up a big third down for the uh, Whalers. Defense needs to hold here for the boxes. Third and 16 now for New Bedford. Seven and a half to go in the third quarter. Still leading 14 to seven over the big three divisional rival, Brockton Boxers. Two receivers set, Williams under center. The give to Palmer goes Nowhere, and that'll bring up a fourth and 16 for New Bedford, and they're going to have to punt. Yeah, nice job by Brockton's defense there. Like you said, they were right on the uh, running back. Once he, the ball was handed off to him, within a second there was a Brockton defender on him for no yardage. Careful, it is Williams back to punt. The quarterback... And he will punt this one away high. And bouncing at the 46, taking a good New Bedford bounce, but returned by Ellerby Cundiff still on his feet. And he has a little bit of a hole, and we're going to have a flag thrown, one would assume, for illegal block in the back against Brockton, and it is. Yeah, when you got a, a running back that can cut back and juke this way, juke that way, sometime you might have a the... Um, blocking team might inadvertently with defenders going every which way hit someone in the back and that's exactly what happened that's a uh, 10 or 15 yard 10, 10 yard penalty another high school action Everett's offense is slowed down they're only up to 44 nothing heading into the fourth quarter and who are they playing? Malden. BC High is beating Severian 14 to three at the end of the third quarter. Pitch out to Pierre, and he's got a hole on the far sideline, running into his own man and brought down at the 47 yard line is Rosen Pierre. And that's what Brockton needs to do, I think a little bit more in his second half is that quick pitch to Pierre. It just seems it doesn't give the defense time to get all of them to get over there. And Pierre's the type of runner. He can run over you when you only got two or three players over there or juke you out for a big play. And that's what happened right there for the boxes. Another pitch out to Pierre. And this time he's taken down in the backfield for a three-yard loss. Yeah, that time uh, Baron Hilton, the junior, was ready. And he they had a nice shoestring upended uh, Pierre with the uh, shoestring tackle. Second and 13 to go for Brockton. Montero Jr. back to pass, he's hit. And still trying, now he's got a hole. Jose Montero Jr. close to the first down marker. Wow. 
making something out of nothing. He definitely made something out of nothing there. Nice scramble job. Scramble right in the pocket and then went straight ahead. Saw an opening, put his speed on and uh, made it third down and about one yard to go. Or well, second down and one yard to go, it says. Uh, now they're changing to third and one for the boxes with 5.13 left in this uh, third quarter. Third and one for the boxers. Four receivers set, two split to each side. Montero under center, it's a quarterback keeper and he's got a first down. Gee, you, you saw the defense come up on the play just before the ball was snapped, but Montero did an excellent job picking the right left side of the uh, line to go and um, seemed like almost easily made the first down. So there's a first down for the boxers. Hunter Jr. back to pass, looking over the middle, and he's picked off again. And now a fumble and picked up by New Bedford. And New Bedford finally brought down. You know, I hope I get this call right, but I think it was defensive uh, offsides on the initial flag. We'll have to wait and see. I saw one of the defensive linemen jump Maybe the defensive end jump a little early. And let's hope that that's the uh, call. It was True Williams on the interception, and it is. It was offsides. Offsides But there was also, also a face mask by Brockton when the interception happened. But offsetting penalties. Yes. Is there was a penalty against Brockton as well. So all told. And Coach Colombo's talking with the referee over there. And Coach Colombo's gonna get a flag. He must have been giving the referee an earful over there. The side judge. And that's gonna be, I'm not sure how many yards that is. But Colombo, Coach Colombo did not like something he saw and he let the side judge over there have it. And that's gonna be a 15 yard penalty. And it is a first down for the boxers. The first and 25. Wow. It's head coach Peter Colombo flagged for giving the side judge the business. He gives to Rosen Pierre. Rosen Pierre finds a hole. He's back to the original first down marker. And it'll be about a yard shy of a first down. It'll be second and one. I think when the um, referees called the penalty on the coach, those Brockton High offensive players got really fired up and they just opened up a hole for Pierre. He picked his right spot and gained a lot of that back. He, matter of fact, he gained all but about three yards of it. Nice job by the boxers to put themselves in a second and short situation. Second and about four. Give to Rosen Pierre. He's got a first down and then some before he's upended. Yeah, it's getting a little chippy out there between the Brockton players and the Bedford players. Pierre did not like the way when he came down, when they came down, tackled him. Something went on right there at the end of that tackle that Pierre did not like, got up very quickly and uh, let the uh, Whalers know about it. First and 10 boxes, Montero Jr. giving to Pierre. Pierre turning the corner and then he is clocked at the 28 yard line, reaching ahead might be down at the 26 and we have a boxer down. It is one of the linemen, it looks like number 78. And That'd be James Webb. And you hate to see that. Yeah. 
He's on his knees and he's up. Number 75, the injured boxer. And that would be Joe Asari, the junior lineman. Walking off under his own power, always a good thing to see. Yes, indeed. They're gonna need Joe back in there once he uh, shakes it off, whatever happened. Second here, about four for the boxers. Another give to Rosen Pierre. Pierre cutting up ahead. He's got a first down and more still on his feet. And he's pushed out of bounds at around the 10 yard line. Boy, Pierre's got that knack of cutting to the inside or outside when there's nothing there. And he makes the most of it. Nice run by Pierre. Boxes in the red zone and threatening. They need to come out of here with six points, Matt. Already down by a touchdown to the big three divisional rivals. We're gonna have a timeout called by New Bedford. With 3.09 to go in the third quarter. And right now, Mad Dog, I feel like the boxes have the New Bedford Whalers defense on its heels right now. At this moment, this is when the boxes need to take advantage of this moment where they had the momentum, they're charging ahead, they're playing um, smash mouth football and they need to score. They need to take advantage of this momentum drive right now. So with the stoppage we remind you, we don't know where Brockton will play next week. We don't know whether it'll be a playoff game yet or whether it will be a non-playoff in the bridesmaids bracket. There will be three weeks of this nonsense where we don't know where the boxer's next opponent will be. And then there's Thanksgiving, which the MIAA has made meaningless. As the three weeks of the playoffs, should the team be successful as Rosen Pierre cutting up ahead. He's got a whole turn in the corner to the end zone. Flags thrown in. Rosen Pierre. Oh, come on. It's going to be a flag against the boxers, so oh, the touchdown's going to be negated. Oh, and I'm sure that's just going to heat up Coach Colombo on the sidelines. And somebody did something holding. Was that holding? Ah, oh, tough break for the boxers right there. They just have to get it out of their mind and get back out there and uh, punch this ball in. I'll tell you, Pierre's running to that right side of that offensive line is really doing a job on that defense on that side. Rosen Pierre has been the rock and redeemer of the Brockton Boxers tonight. Montero Jr. looking over the middle, and he's got Ellerby Cundiff for a boxer touchdown. You know, that was a beautiful play call because the boxers basically marched down the field on the run, and a little inside move and um, Montero, Montero Jr. put it right where he was supposed to receive a caught the football, six points. That was Paul Mitchell on the reception for the boxers. Extra point is up and good and we have a tie ball game with three minutes to go in the third quarter. Well, I tell you, the boxers showed us a lot of maturity there after that um, first touchdown that was called back. They uh, concentrated, got back up there, little play action, little quick strike to the inside, touchdown boxes. Nice job by the uh, offensive team there to keep their composure after the, um, the first touchdown was called back. So we're all knotted up at 14 apiece. Heading into the later stage of this game. Brockton has had a very, very slow start here. 
The same can be said for the Whalers who were unable to score after running off a 81 yard kickoff return to start this game. They have since added one more touchdown on a 45 yard bomb. Tobo's short kick. is returned and not very well for the Whalers all the way back at the 18 yard line. Well, I tell you what, he was crunched. I I'm impressed that he got right up after that play because he was pounded on and he's not a big guy, but. Shahid Barros on that reception, or return rather for the Whalers. Brockton's defense has to be feeling pretty good. Their offense has produced. Now it's a give to Palmer and he's brought down at the 18 yard line. They're gonna spot him about the 20. Yeah, as we get deeper into this football game, that offensive line is starting to wear down a little bit by Brockton's um, front four. They're doing a nice job of uh, loosening that uh, offensive line up a little bit. They've been relentless all evening, putting pressure on the quarterback. Four receivers set, two split to each side. True Williams. Pass is going to be incomplete. And that reason that pass was incomplete, very short, too short to receive because of the great pass rush that the um, boxers are putting on New Bedford's quarterback. In the game of the night, up on Morrissey Boulevard. It's now 17 to six, BC High on top of Severian. With just under two minutes left. And basically that, that's what I expected. Just a matter of time before BC got their act together. You'll never guess who it was that created the lead for the Eagles. Probably not. Danny Abraham. Wow. And we've two, heard touchdown, that name uh, two touchdown runs. Both over 45 yards. And Danny Abraham, who has committed to Harvard, thankfully he's a senior this year. Yeah, because he's been a thorn in Brockton's side for the last four years. <clears throat> Catholic Memorial destroyed Malden Catholic 34-0. Williams receiving the snap, and he's gonna get clobbered again. The freight train, that's Laguerre. Carduso, number three got in there, the senior. That was a blitz. Well, the sack will be credited. To Cardozo. Cardozo, yes. That was a nice job. He got right in there. Well, and so it's fourth and long for the Whalers. Ellery Cundiff back to receive the punt from True Williams. And it's going to be touched down by the Whalers at their own 47 yard line. So Brockton's offense is back out on the field. Very nice uh, ball movement. Take moving. your first lead of the night here. Yeah, very, very nice job moving the football down in that first possession in the second half. First or second possession. All we got is one minute, seven seconds left in this third quarter. Well, 
Montero gives to Rosen Pierre, who has been very successful in the last few drives for the boxers. He's bottled up at the line of scrimmage. give to Pierre and he's brought down at the line of scrimmage again. Boy, big number 76 for uh, New Bedford was pretty fired up for making that tackle. Anthony Soares, a junior. Personal foul. Mental mistake right there for the uh, the Whalers. It'll be a first down for Brockton. Ooh, that's a big 15 yarder right there. I didn't see the personal foul. I'm not sure what it was, but it's going against uh, New Bedford. Nice break there for the boxes for a change. Well, if, and the key word here is if, the season ended right now, Brockton would be ninth ranked in the South Sectional. And they would take on fourth seeded Catholic Memorial in the first round of the MIAA playoffs. So with a win here, Brockton would likely escape the Catholic Conference in the first round at least, and end up at Newton North or Franklin. So we go into the fourth quarter. End of the third quarter. All knotted up, 14 apiece. No other way we'd have it here on the last game of the regular season to determine the boxers' playoff fate. And Miles with the season winding down here, only 11 minutes left in the regular season. What does Brockton have to do to prepare for the unknown the next three weeks? That's a good question. That, that's a tough, tough um, preparation for the coaches because like you said, they won't know who they're going to play until, what would you say, Sunday? Uh, we'll weekend? find out Sunday, and there's only one full contact practice before the next game. So the coaches will have a big job of um, preparing these players for whoever they might play. But like I said, once they win this football game, their first few practices, they might not know. Well, actually, this is Friday night, so, yeah, they would uh, know by Monday who – their first practice, who they're playing the following week. Montero Jr. pitching out to Pierre. Pierre finding a hole and pushed out at the 25. Well, the rankings are such. BC High, the only undefeated team in the south section. They stand at 6-0. They're followed by Needham, Severian Catholic Memorial, Newton North, Franklin, Taunton, Nattleboro. Then we have Brockton at the 9. Weymouth, Brookline, and Framingham. Once we dip down to the fifth seed, there is no team that's over 500. Yeah, very competitive year between all, a lot of these high schools. We're gonna have a false start against the boxers. Oh, they're going to call it on um, the Whalers. Offsides Defense. against the Whalers, so a big break for the Boxers. Free first down as we inch closer to the New Bedford end zone. Yeah, what, what happened was the 
a New Bedford player went into that gray area just as the ball was snapped. And even though you saw one or two Brockton players move, that was just as the ball was snapped. So it looked a little like Brockton could have been called, but New Bedford was definitely uh, already past the line of scrimmage just as that ball was snapped to the uh, quarterback. Terry Jr. under center, play action. He's gonna throw it long into the end zone and overthrowing his man it was Sonny Oak and Lola, the big tight end. Yeah, that was, that was um, out of the Gronk playbook, Patriots playbook, where Gronk just hits his um, defender, then does a little post pattern. Brady gets it to him just out of the out stretched arms of uh, number 93 for the uh, boxes, Okendola. Excuse me, number 95. The game up at Morrissey Boulevard has gone final. 17-6 the final, BC High getting the win against Severian, Danny Abraham 170 yards and a pair of touchdowns, winning the game for the Eagles. And BC will finish the season undefeated at 7-0. Yeah, it's a big third down for the boxers. They need to continue this drive to get some points. Break this tie. Pitch out to Rosen Pierre. Pierre is going to lose an edge. Nah, he, slipped. he slipped on the natural grass. So it brings up a big fourth down situation for the boxes. Fourth and about six. And a timeout called by Brockton here with 9.50 to go in the regular season. Yeah, it's a good timeout. And it looks like it's fourth down and nine yards to go for the boxes. Rosen Pierre has rushed for 112 yards on the night. Yeah, he's been the workhorse this evening there, Mad Dog. Done Usually a great job. Usually we see that, that little revolving door back there, Pierre handling most of the load. But Ellerby Cundiff is, was getting touches. Cumberlander has been quiet tonight. Yes. One would wonder whether they're trying to save some of these bigger guys for Week one of the playoffs next week. Fourth and six, or fourth and nine rather for the boxers. I think New Bedford called a timeout. And they did. Trying to ice the quarterback. I think what New Bedford's defense wanted to see what type of offense, offensive setup that the boxes had. Now they're going to make the adjustments, but what's going to happen is Columbus is going to come out with a different uh, formation. It's like a chess game when you get into the fourth quarter, correct? Scary scene in Natick. It's the Red Hawks playing Wellesley. Wellesley's Chris Altoff was put into an ambulance midfield. They had to drive the ambulance On the to, the, to the 50 yard line to load Wellesley's player into it. No word on exactly what happened. Montero Jr. back to pass, looking for the end zone. And it's gonna fall incomplete, a turnover on downs for the boxers. A nice coverage by the boxers, nice um, breakup by the defender. I couldn't see who it was, maybe number five for the uh, Whalers there, uh, Hilton. So, New Bedford's defense stood tall and prevented the boxers from getting in that, getting in that end zone. Still 9.43 on the clock. A lot of football left here in the fourth quarter. 
Turnover on downs, New Bedford with the ball at the Brockton 18 yard line, or at their own 18 yard line I should say. That snap for True Williams, who has to dig it out of his legs, and that play didn't develop at all for New Bedford. Not at all. Brockton must play smart defense. And really, they've done a good job since um, that last um, score, which was a bomb, as you said, Mad Dog. And boxes really have um, battened down the hatchets and really stood their ground on the defensive side. Williams, high snap, it's out! Ball's out, and I think Williams fell on it first. Yeah, he, he got a uh, New Bedford bounce. That would have been disastrous for uh, New Bedford if Brockton could have came up with that football. Loss of six, so if Brockton has a hope of winning this game, they've got to get the ball to their studs. Rosen Pierre leading the team in scoring with four touchdowns on the year. Ellerby Cundiff and Dexter Cumberland are not too far behind him with three. Montero Jr. with two on the ground as well. And those three have been leading the boxers all year. Second and long for the Whalers. And complete to Hilton. And he's got a first down for New Bedford. Big first down for uh, number six. Who caught that football. Edgar Semedo. Semedo, nice catch. He had to go low for it. I think that's the first time the ball's been thrown to him in his football game, and he made the most of it. Kept this drive going for the uh, New Bedford Whalers. Three receivers set, two on the near side. True Williams in the shotgun to give to Nigel Palmer, who has a hole, and he Busts up the gut for a gain of about seven. Whoa, he was ready to really turn it on. Luckily, number seven for the boxes there. Nate DeRolis, a senior, made the uh, big game tackle because if he didn't get a hold of him, the little scat back was going uh, for a number of yards down more down the field. Williams in the shotgun again, flanked by Jadrian Carrion, and we have movement and a false start against the Whalers. We'll back him up five yards. Yeah, the tight end, number 30 for the uh, New Bedford Whalers. What happened was one of the Brockton defenders kind of flinched, and mentally it caused him to go ahead and get ready to take off, and that's a uh, legal procedure. Take this opportunity to remind you that Brockton Community Access is on Twitter. We're on Twitter. Brockton Channel. We're on Twitter. We're on Twitter. Wow. Live tweeting the football games. At Brockton Channel, you want to talk to us? Hashtag BCA Sports. Be glad to talk about anything. MIAA playoff format. How convoluted that one is. The undefeated Brockton boys soccer team, 13-0-2. Congratulations to the uh, Brockton High soccer team on a great season. They've already clinched their playoff berth and will face Durfee this week for the big three division. Well, breaking news, because when news breaks, BCA breaks it. Sure Bridgewater does. Raynham has defeated St. John's Prep 20 to 14. Wow. And a fumble, True Williams picks it up. And he's brought down for a big loss. He's at the 25 yard line. It'll be at a third and 15 for New Bedford. 
Wow, New Bedford's really put themselves in a hole as the uh, snap was mishandled by the quarterback. This has been a sloppy one, Miles. Yeah, it, it has, it's, especially on the uh, New Bedford side. They had a couple big plays that has kept him in his football game, but uh, it has been sloppy. So third in, we call it about 16 for the Whalers. Palmer flanking Williams to his left. And it's carry on with the carry, and he's tossed out of bounds after a gain of about four. And that was a good adjective. He was tossed out of bounds. The little guy from uh, New Bedford, number 27. Carry on. And this will be a punting situation for the uh, Whalers. And Brockton will get the ball back with about five minutes and 35 seconds on the clock. Plenty of time, need a good return here. Oh! Or it'll be coming if a high botched kick. Goes about 10 yards, doesn't get to the original first down marker. And it was definitely botched. It, nobody got their hands on it, but almost did. Off I the think, side of his foot? Yeah, I think that's what, that kind of spooked him. He saw the Brockton defender coming in to block it, and he did not kick it well. As you said, off the side of his foot, gives Brockton excellent field position in New Bedford territory. It's a first and 10 for the boxers from the New Bedford 43 yard line. Five and a half to go. You just gotta feed Rosen Pierre the rock here. Waste as much time off this clock as possible. That's a good game plan. Give to the big man still on his feet is Dexter Cumberlander. Wow, that, that place, great play call right there because it fooled the the um, New Bedford defense, and even fooled you, Mad Dog, because like you said, they've been feeding it to Pierre. Cumberlander's been quiet. I don't think he's quiet. gonna carry since the first quarter. And there you got Cumberland, big heavy back, just rumbling and bumbling up the field. Now they give to Cumberlander again. Fumble. And they're calling the balls out, and New Bedford says they have it. And let's see. Up, oh, they're saying it was, luckily, he was down. We have a Whaler down. It's number nine, Isaiah Gomes. Clock stops with 4.57 left. Yeah, he looks like he's in some pain. Looks like it's one of his legs he might have hurt. It's up. Let's hope he's Holding okay. His right knee. But he is in some pain, unfortunately. So it is Isaiah Gomes. The junior wide receiver and defensive back, 6'2", 174, who is down for the Whalers. 4.57 to go, Brockton with a second and three. Well, I tell you, Matt, New Bedford's defense can ill afford to lose one of their starters at this time in the football game. And Gomes able to get up. And he's going to be helped off the field. And he's Favoring a, that right leg. Yeah, he's a defensive back when he's playing uh, defense. Will uh, the boxers go at the, the new kid that just came in, whoever that might be, fresh off the boat, pushed into a tough situation right now with uh, 4.49 left on this clock. It's Cumberlander and Pierre in the backfield again. Montero Jr. under center. 
Ontario Junior quarterback. Keeper finds a hole and he's brought down at the 17 yard line. Wow. Great call right there. Defense did a nice job of keeping uh, Montero from, um, did he get the first down? Gonna rule him just short, so it'll be third and half a yard. Just short. Big third down here for the boxes. 408 and counting. Wind this down to about 350 before you snap the ball. Montero Jr. quarterback keeper again. He's oh! got the first down. All the way down to the eight yard line is Jose Montero Jr. Wow. He just has a knack when he does those quarterback sneaks, which hold the pick. And then he somehow just slides off his block and creates something out of nothing. Just a nice job by Montero Jr as he comes back into the huddle with the play from Coach Colombo. First and goal for the Boxers, the first such time they've had that tonight. Rosen Pierre with the carry up to the five yard line. Clock ticking with 3.15 on the scoreboard. This is agony for the uh, New Bedford coach. They know what's coming. Brockton's gonna be able to punch it in and there'll probably be about two minutes left on the clock when they do. So now second and goal for Brockton. Montero Jr. under center, then everybody moves. Ooh, yeah, that's gonna be on the boxes. Everyone pointing at each other. Yeah. Unless New Bedford defensive line touched someone when they jump, it's most it's likely a gonna false be start out. against Brockton. Yeah. Second and goal from now the 12 yard line. That's good for the boxes. Gives them a little bit more time to run time off the clock before punching it in. Montero Jr. under center. Pitch out to Rosen Pierre. Pierre finding a hole, cutting to the outside. Trying to turn the corner, lowers the shoulder. And he's brought down at around the five yard line. Yeah, I tell you, whoever made that tackle paid the price. As you said, Mad Dog, Pierre lowered the shoulder. And that's a lot of energy coming at you. Boxes need to punch it in here on third down. They, don't, they really don't need to put a lot of pressure on themselves on a fourth down and goal. They need to punch it in here, third down and goal. Now third and goal from the five, the give to Cumberlander. Cumberlander rumbling, stumbling, bumbling down to the one. And he's gonna be short of the goal line. Well, if it's gonna be fourth down, well, let it be fourth down and one yard to go. If, I was new, if I'm New Bedford, I'm calling a timeout right now. You know, you're right. You're right, Matt. They're letting a lot of time go off the clock. I'm not sure how many timeouts New Bedford has, but you're exactly right. They're letting there'll this be clock. About, there'll be about a minute 30 when Brockton snaps this ball. By the time New Bedford can set up their offense, probably about a minute left. That's not much time at all. I think Brockton's gonna do the same thing. Brockton's gonna let the play clock wind all the way down and now call a timeout. See, that's, that's bad coaching by the New Bedford Whalers. I would have called a timeout around 35, 40 seconds ago. Yeah, definitely so. I interesting non-call by New Bedford's coach to let that precious time click off the, uh, tick off the, off the clock. So all told, it looks like Brockton will get a victory here should they be able to punch it into the end zone right now. Well, that's the key. They haven't done it yet. 
I mean, it looks good, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. The way this year's been going, nothing's guaranteed for the boxers. Coming in here with a two and three record. Fourth and goal on the one for the boxers. I mean, two and four, excuse me, two and four record. Boxers coming in here. Montero Jr. gives to Cumberlander. Cumberlander is in for the boxer touchdown. Wow, what a relief. That was so much relief. Boxers are happy. They did what they had to do. Protected the football and played smash mouth football on this last drive. Now holding the ball for the boxers is uh, Tom O'Brien, who's done an excellent job all evening. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Brockton has their first lead of the game with a minute 26 left to go in the regular season. Yeah, and now I'm sure the coach for New Bedford would like to have those 35, 40 seconds back if he would have called a timeout, like you said. Instead of having a minute and 26 seconds, he might have two minutes on yeah, the clock. Yeah, you're, you're talking maybe 210 was yeah, on the clock exactly. when it started winding. So New Bedford finds himself in a tough, tough situation. The offense has basically been um, null and void since that um, bomb that was thrown in the first half. I believe in the second quarter. Brockton's defense has basically shut them down since that uh, long bomb was thrown. It's Tobo to squib this one away. Palmer and Jefferson back deep to return. So I'm bouncing in the direction of Shamari Jefferson who's got it and he's got a hole. Shamari Jefferson and he's got one man to beat. Shamari Jefferson again. Knocked out of bounds. Wow. Wow. New Bedford could not have asked for a better return with the time on the clock. One minute, 14 seconds left. Putting a lot of pressure on this Brockton's, de Brockton's defense. That is the second special teams breakdown of the night. And what a story would be if that book ended this game. It's the special teams breakdowns for Brockton. Wow. An 82 yard reception, the return touchdown for Shamari Jefferson to start this game so many hours ago. And he's got another long one all the way down to the boxer 12 yard line, first and 10. Yep, the uh, New Bedford fans are on their feet at the moment. Brockton's gonna call a timeout. Well, we've seen Brockton with a, a huge stop on first and 10 from the 11 for New Bedford. Can they do it again here? They can. I mean, they know they can. But the question is, what does New Bedford's head football coach call why he's down here? That's the whole key. What do they call? Brockton's defensive line has basically manhandled New Bedford's offensive line in this second half. So if I had to put my money, I'd put my money on the boxes to um, hopefully hold and uh, somehow get out of here with a win. What a turn of events this was. Just a few minutes ago, we were saying Brockton's got the easy win. You know, just waste out the remainder of the clock. Yeah, just a, just a breakdown on the kickoff team for the second time in and this New, football game. And New Bedford's got four, four timeouts remaining. Four receiver set, True Williams in the gun, flanked by Carrion. 
Williams receiving the snap, gives off to Carrion, who's dropped at the 10 yard line. And an immediate timeout by New Bedford. 108 to go. Well, with uh, New Bedford using their first of their four timeouts left, coach for New Bedford is looking a little bit more smarter, not calling a timeout with his defense down at the other end. They were just lucky enough to get a great return on the kickoff. Second and eight from the 10 for New Bedford. Williams again in the shotgun, flanked by Carrion to his left. Drew Williams receiving the snap, pulling it off his hip, and it's gonna throw it incomplete. And that was pressure by number 93 and number three for the boxers. That was some serious pressure. Sonny Oak and Lola again for the boxers. And uh, number three. Josh Bortles. Oh, that was uh, a blitz by um, Bortles. Good call defensively for the boxers there. Now third down. Third and eight for New Bedford from the 10 yard line. Trips to the far side and it's carry on flanking True Williams to his right. Williams receiving the snap, throwing it up. He's got his man and can't hold on to it as he was falling out of bounds. That, that was a tough catch because he was trying to keep his feet in bounds, but he just couldn't hold on to it. That was Hilton on the far sideline trying to stay in bounds and make a catch. Everybody was, on the Brockton side held their breath on that one. And it was Hilton with the second New Bedford touchdown of the night, a 65 yard bomb. I'm just looking at your uh, laptop here, enjoying one of my favorite cartoon characters when I was a kid. It's a wild Twitter feed, oh, wild okay. Twitter feed. My man Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Yeah. Trips to the far side. Williams again in the gun. It is fourth and eight. And a timeout it is called by Brockton. Yep, definite chess match right now between Brockton's coach and New Bedford's coach. Lincoln Sudbury has, this, this one's ugly. That ain't the score, is it? The score <laughs> with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter is Lincoln Sudbury 77, Cambridge 38. Is that Lincoln Sudbury's basketball team? One would hope, but it's not. Nah. Wow, 77 points. All right, here we go, fourth and eight for all the marbles. Drew Williams in the shotgun, trips to the far side. Low snap, Williams throwing to the end zone, and it's broken up, incomplete pass. Brockton's gonna escape. It bounced off the hands three times and couldn't hold on to it. Was Baron Hilton in the end zone, and Brockton takes over on downs at the 10 yard line with 52 seconds to go. Wow, that was real drama right there. Cause the ball looked like it was almost in his hands and somehow the Brockton defender got his hands in there and broke up the play. Again, we held our breath up here in the press box as that ball was thrown to the receiver. Bounced yeah. off the hands, he just couldn't, yeah. couldn't hold on to it. Couldn't hold on to it. So Brockton is in victory formation. Couple of knees, and this one will come to an end. Yeah, they're gonna let this one run out, Matt. Brockton took its final knee.
And that's your typical Brockton New Bedford rivalry. This was a scrappy, ugly, sloppy, exciting, exciting game that was won in the trenches. Definitely won in the trenches. Because Brockton took that last drive down, ran the football down the field, down New Bedford's throat, and punched it in for the uh, go ahead score. Miles. The word escape is the only one that's coming to my mind right now. The way Brockton played tonight, this one could have gone either way. Yes. This team does not look at, like a team that is ready to win in the MIAA playoffs. Unfortunately, they, they need a lot of work. They need a lot of work. Um, but it's good that they was able to come out of here with a win. So their spirits are up. Their momentum is up. They'll have a good practice next week and hopefully be prepared for whoever they play. Well, it was the senior quarter, uh, junior quarterback rather for New Bedford, True Williams, who created all the pressure of the night on the Brockton boxers. A solid performance by New Bedford. Brockton was just able to get the upper hand. Yeah, you're right. Very solid performance. I was completely surprised by New Bedford's performance this evening, but I was also uplifted by Brockton's. Um, they just didn't give up. They were down and they didn't give up. And that was the key there. They kept fighting. Coaches kept urging their, their kids on and um, they came out of here, stole a win. Miles, there hasn't been, I mean, there hasn't been a, a ton of low notes. The defense of the Brockton Boxers has been very solid all season long. Yeah, they have. The defense has been put into some tough position by their offense. And again, they, they play these tough games all year with the Catholic Conference, and th they're the shining star of, of this, so far of this season is the defense. Well, the two game changers, and my game ball is going to the Brockton defense. Two sets of downs. New Bedford started on the 11-yard line of Brockton with a first and 10, couldn't punch it in. Brockton came up with a big turnover. First and 10 from the 12th, the final drive of the game. And Brockton's defense again held strong and ended this one with a W. Exactly, and you know the old cliche, you win championships with the defense. And tonight Brockton took the big three championship with their defense. 21 to 14 the final score. Brockton winning the big three division over the New Bedford Whalers here in New Bedford tonight. Again, the final score, 21-7, Brockton over New Bedford. For everyone here at BCA Sports, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons. My broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. And hey, we'll see you in the playoffs.